Hey everybody, it's the Chaos Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Working Group or DEI Working Group as we call it. Um, I'm Elizabeth, nice to see everybody here. I'm the Community Manager for Chaos, so I'm gonna facilitate this meeting. Um, just a quick reminder, this and all Chaos meetings are under our Chaos Code of Conduct. So we appreciate it if you just keep that in mind, you know, as you interact with us. Um, Lucy's snoring in the back as she usually is, so. Apologies if that's distracting. Um, she's a good girl, though. She's my dog, not my child. But yeah. Huh. Um, oh, can you tell the difference? <laughs> one's a little furrier than the other. Yeah. One, one Child Protective Services doesn't come for a dog. I think that's, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, another point of interest that we want to bring up is that is today's Sean's birthday. So happy birthday to Sean. <laughs> Woo! Made it every year. Yeah. 32. Yeah. Nice. Just kidding. <laughs> I wish that was me. Another trip around the sun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, good job, Sean. Let me share my screen. Where's the the screen share? Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh, it's huge. It's right in front of my face. Yeah, it's in the middle in the bottom, but yeah, sometimes. All right. If you haven't answered our question of the day, we have two today, so you get a bonus. You got to think twice as hard as you usually do. Um, and if anybody needs the minutes, and then I'll just drop it in the chat here really quick, um, just in case anybody needs those. Um, yeah. So if you want to add your name to the agenda, I'll oops, add a couple more spaces and tell us what your favorite writing utensil is, uh, if you have one. Um, what did, what was this comment here? Is this a team? Yes, it is a team. And I actually went to one of the games while I was on break and it was so much fun. It was so much, we lost sadly, but it was so much fun. Oh my gosh. A plus recommend. I will go again if I can afford it because tickets are not cheap. So <laughs> um, no. it was a blast though. We had a really, really good time. So. At least you can get tickets like yeah. Packers yeah. games. I can only get tickets from the scalpers. Yeah, yeah, we, um, yeah, I, I ordered them pretty early on. So, uh, yeah, if I, if I want to go to another one, I might have to do that too, Sean. The scalping actually turned, I mean, like in advance, you pay like five, six times as much as you do from Scalpers Row in yeah. Green Bay for what yeah. it's worth. I don't know if it's the same probably, in Cincinnati. Probably, yeah, it's probably the same. So, for those who don't know, um, the Bengals are a um, U.S. Uh, football team in my city. So, and they were good but we're not doing so well this year and the our quarterback is the highest paid nfl player in history of the nfl so yeah we're a little, dis <laughs> a little disappointed in his performance but yeah all right. actually all right. it's funny um <laughs> it created this cascading effect where mahomes got a new contract this week and now he's technically the highest player played player <laughs> good he can he can take all the front then <laughs> Okay, so down to business. Um, I just wanted to bring this up with this was a conversation in the community call yesterday. And I wanted to bring it up here in case anybody was not able to make it yesterday and did not hear about what was going on. Um, so essentially, just a quick summary of this conversation was um, that we had a conversation in the Grimoire Lab chat channel on Slack, um, someone had brought up some accessibility um, issues with Grimoire Lab and WordPress. Um, someone who works at GoDaddy, she's a developer, I think developer advocate there. I'm very interested in accessibility and she's been a long time contributor to WordPress as well in the accessibility um, area. And so um, she was asking if we, well, first off, they, she and her colleague who is um, a blind developer had brought up some um, potential improvements on our website. Um, and then Yiga was kind enough to um, speak up that, uh, I think it was Yiga, right? Was that you? I think that's who that was, right? Um, was no. kind of, no, who was it then? I don't remember. It was so long it ago. Was, I'll try to remember. Okay. Well, we can go back and look at the minutes. Someone, a chaotic that I can't remember because <laughs> I'm tired, um, has offered to do a website audit that um, they are working accessibility quite a bit. So, um, we are going to add that uh, to our list of projects. For our project managers, um, first we're going to do this website audit um, and just see what we need to clean up on our website 
And then we're going to create this accessibility statement, which basically will tell people what uh, version of the standards we are attempting to fulfill and, and be in alignment with. And as well, kind of, we are hoping to expand ours as well to include things like meetings and other ways that we are attending to accessibility within the chaos project. So I just wanted to bring that up um, to see if anybody had uh, any questions or concerns, comments, interest in working on this. Um, yeah, just wanted to throw it up to this group here. Let's see if there's any additional discussion or comments. I, I don't think we need to overthink this state, the accessibility statement right away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, like I, like I said yesterday, I think the, like, we have to do the audit before the statement really matters, right? Because um, the statement's kind of meaningless if we don't, like, go through a checklist and see what accessibility issues do or don't exist on our website. Yeah, it was Victoria. You get, thank you so much after you put that. I was like, yes, of course, it's Victoria, I remember now. Um, so I'm just going to... I mean, I don't want to say that doing an accessibility audit and report generation is some easy thing to do. So, I mean, is this something that we'll be thinking about contracting out? Because I bet it's harder. Like, <laughs> like something tells me that it's like design work. But people are like, "Oh, it's just design work. You just can you just do this? You know, like it's super easy." Or um like audits like it might take a while I'm, I'm a little concerned that if we just ask one person to do it i mean it's it's <laughs> been like, um oh so yeah, I, i've done different. these before it's been like 10 years um but it took like it took like a developer like a week to go through accessibility stuff on sites like a week like a year 10 years ago i don't know what's involved today i don't I mean the technology is wild vastly different um understanding the gaps is probably not that big of a task because that week was the week 10 years ago was like just to to both identify and fix accessibility issues like i'm sure our understanding of it is more sophisticated now <clears throat> so i mean do we have yeah. a do we have a place that like a checklist we can start from so we can there must be some kind of checklist or thing yeah, that we can use to do the to sort of get a sense of well, what is involved in this audit because I you're right I don't know how big of a job it is. Yeah, and I think that that's where Victoria can help us at least see how big it's going to be. Um, yeah. as she does this, so like this is the thing that she does for her job. So yeah, um, she might be able to give us a little more insight on the the task at hand. And, well, and, and to Matt's out. point, if that is a substantial effort and we need to contract with her, it, I mean, it seems aligned with our values that we would do that. Um, and then I also, if this is going to be part of working with project managers, like the, the audit results will most likely show us a lot of things we need to improve and work on um and we will probably need to prioritize a lot of things like we i'm sure we won't be able to do everything all at once so i no it's it's great i'm not i just my concern is it's going to be a little bit bigger than i than just <laughs> like some afternoon yeah no I, the... I i think you're not probably wrong go ahead Iga. I'm sorry, it takes me some time to unmute um, five. I'm sorry. Um, but I just wanted to say that there are different kinds of, you know, accessibility audits. So it does depend on what we're trying to focus on as a team. Um, I do know that the lady from um what was the place again? Um, the lady that spoke yesterday, however, was talking about um, you know, accessibility audits regarding um blind people deaf people and you know stuff like that so i think that that was the focus of 
you know, what she was raising. Um, people had of hearing and people that, you know, use Braille and stuff like that. But there's also other kinds of, you know, accessibility audits that deal with, um, that we can use Google Analytics for. So it depends on what we're trying to um, achieve. But I did think that what she was focusing on was for people, the people that are less focused on in society. And I think it's a good way to start. So I think that's what I wanted to point yeah, out. A, yeah, that's a good idea. And so maybe it is, um, I think you're right. I think it was vision impaired was one of the primary Yes. Yeah, vision yes. impaired was what, definitely one of the primaries. So maybe we start there. That's a good idea. Thanks, Yuga. And I will say that the the plugins that we use on WordPress and everything that we've done passed their checks. So it's not like we're starting from scratch. Like I think we're at a level that's relatively acceptable it'll just be tweaks i think if i had to guess um because i know that that was really important to kevin to make sure that anything we implement had you know gave some kind of certification or or um you know some kind of something that said they were uh, had passed some accessibility checks so it may just be where you know the plugins kind of meet the rest of wordpress i don't know what we can see Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's, I think the, whatever issues we may have are likely fixable within WordPress because it's such a giant um, kind of owns a lot of the content on the Internet. Right. And so, I mean, I, I will be surprised if if we're like wildly off, because my guess is the default is sort of moving in the direction of accessibility. And so, like what the things that we have to change are will it's like we just don't know until we do it right so <clears throat> and she did um courtney did mention a we're a free wordpress plugin that can help us with the audit that is specifically for wordpress too so that will help as well but um yeah. so i think next steps is to um maybe you could, did i cut you off i'm so sorry if i did nope you did not <laughs> yes i wanted to if we if we could remember the name of the plugin because um, one of the things that I, i've done this before for an open source that i usually contribute to i think last year so i do know that there are web content accessibility guidelines and there are various levels to it there's level a there's level aa and you know triple a and all of that stuff so we could also use you know audit tools i'm happy to work with victoria on this it's really not a problem but I think we, we just need to focus on, you know, what exactly we're trying to audit. Yeah, I feel like the one she mentioned yesterday was a little I different. Oh, equalize. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Isn't that what okay. I put in there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We get to the readings. Okay. So let's drop this in our notes here as well. Oh, you did already. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'm going to put you up down here. See, I just manifested that by, <laughs> by volunteering you earlier. Now you're part of it, <laughs> whether you want it to be or not. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's all right. <laughs> um, OK, so we will talk about this. We have a project manager meeting today, which is the next step on our um, agenda. Um, add to list of projects for project managers. To sort out. Okay, any other comments or thoughts on this thing? Mm -hmm. I will say personally, I do like that this has been brought up because we do have this as a thing people can do in our project access metric. So it makes sense that we would want to also do it ourselves. So I'm, I'm really glad that this kind of um, popped up. So yeah. It does make me wonder. So we, I was looking at our metrics as well. Here. And we have 
if you scroll down, we have something in row 40 A6, which is attention to color blindness. And I'm guessing this is going to be covered in such an audit. Yeah, because I would. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you think? Like, I in, even in Project Access, we have like web content accessibility standards or guidelines in the metric itself. Yeah, and I would I'm think wondering if included. Yeah, is, yeah, just going to be subsumed into the metric we already have published. Yeah, let's just look at it real quick. I'm, I'm, I, I agree. Yeah, I would, I would agree. So what, do, mm -hmm. what should we do with that metric then? Should we close that out? Probably so. Just, I wonder in that document, the attention to colorblindness is if there's anything in there. Oops. Yeah. That was specific to the color. Hmm. This looks like the only thing. These two look like the only thing, really. So for mm -hmm. my, um, with regards to colorblindness, um, there are palettes designed for the colorblind. And it's these days, like, because I do visualizations quite a lot, um, I'm always, I always select uh, palettes that are colorblind safe, I guess, for lack of a better word. So like accomplishing these goals is much easier than it used to be. Like you used to have to actually manually select colors and stuff. And now <clears throat> you can just choose a colorblind safe palette. Right. And I'm wondering if that is part of a web accessibility audit. It probably, I mean, it probably is. My recollection is it's like red and green are not, are, those are the biggest ones. Like we often use red and green to indicate stop and go. And those are not differentiated well by colorblind folks or a large percentage of colorblind folks. I think there's two or three different sh shapes of colorblindness, but red and green, I think are across most of all but one of them maybe. <clears throat> You have your hand up. Go for it. Okay, so I want to say that yes, it is part of the accessibility audit because um, attention to colorblindness is important so that it's inclusive of everybody. So, yes, it is part of it. Okay, so in that case, then I'm thinking the, the Google Doc that you had up, Elizabeth for attention to colorblindness. Like if we could just mm -hmm. maybe spend a little bit of time before the next meeting to think about how we could include maybe some of this text as necessary or links as necessary into the released project access metric. You know what I mean? We'd look through this, anything that seems to make sense, we would issue a PR against the project access metric. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And then we would, once we're done with that, we could close attention to color blindness as its own metric. Do we have anybody that wants to work on that? I'm happy to if nobody wants to. Is that just like by work on that to just mean going through the <clears throat> colorblindness check or? Yeah, uh, no, um, taking the colorblindness metric and uh -huh. um, pulling out any pieces that are specific to colorblindness and putting them in the project access. 
Oh, oh Rhoda, awesome. Let's do that together. Do you want to? Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Rhoda. Awesome. That's a great point, Matt. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay, anything else with accessibility in general? Were there any other metrics on here that kind of touch on accessibility specifically? That I saw that we've worked on anyway. Okay. okay. Uh, just this one, I guess. But I'm pretty yep. sure that is already um, actually listed as a thing that for, for slides, especially like that slides are have been audited or looked at. Yeah. But that the uh, the event organizers are providing guidance for folks to make their slides colorblind friendly. I, I remember that. Yeah, so I think we're good. OK. Uh, OK, well, I guess we can move on. Um, just again, reminder, project me managers meeting is starting back up today. For some reason, it was not on the calendar. And I'm not is my fault. I'm not sure what happened with the recurring event, but it has been has been fixed from here moving on. So um, if we have a light attendance today, that's totally fine. Um, or if nobody shows up, I'll be there. <laughs> so if nobody shows up, that's also fine. We'll just meet again next week. Um, but that is today at 1 p.m. U.S. Central. So yeah. Um, the, is, oh, sorry, is there any questions about, the, uh, about this? How's it going? Good. We only had one meeting. <laughs> yeah, I said, sorry, I remember. I remember there was one meeting. But it was great. Like, we really, we really made a ton of progress, I feel like. Um, we talked about tools that we could potentially use. We're going to try to use GitHub um, project boards since a lot of our work is already in GitHub and that's super transparent and it's not another tool that we need to, to learn. Um, a lot of us were not super familiar with that. Um, Catherine was, and so she's going to give us a little tutorial at the next meeting. If she's there today, we'll do it today. If not, we'll do it next week. Um, so we also decided to use for every project that comes up, um, we'll have a project manager and then um, a, a lead, a project lead, which is the person kind of responsible for the actual work or, you know, driving the actual work, um, kind of like a maintainer would be uh, on a working group or, or a, you know, working group lead. Um, and then also, um, if needed, a non-technical lead as well, depending on the project. So if there's like something that needs documentation and some kind of like the um, Slack bot, for instance, has like technical stuff, but also has some documentation. So those two folks would work together in, in tandem with um, the project manager just to kind of keep it all together. Um, yep. What am I missing? Nothing. Is there a... Is there a um, hope to have say people who are in these roles maybe attend the community meeting once a month or how will we kind of like what you were doing yesterday in the community call with ruth and chaos africa like just like an update as to how you know what's being worked on or kind of what the new new thoughts are is there something similar in this regard we haven't really um talked about that but we certainly can um, I think that was, now that you say that, that was another big thing that uh, we were going to do is um, just make a, a big list of all of the things because that's, um, we don't, I don't think we have one right now that has all these listed. So um, we'll make a list. What we might do, um, I don't know how easy it will be for the project managers to attend the community meetings. I know some of them do already, um, but what we could also do is just to do an async and then I can just do a quick update on all the projects, something like that. Yeah. Yep. That'd be great. Cool. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, please, I have a question. Yeah. Elizabeth. Um, will the meeting always be 1 p.m. U.S. Um, Central time? We can we can change it if that would be better. We can certainly change it. I mean, like I said, we've had one meeting, so we can do whatever we want with it, honestly. Oh, OK. OK. Do you, are you you're in the um, the project manager slack, right? Yes, I am. Yeah, if we need to change it, we can also um, discuss it there as well. So if there's a okay. better time, if you want to propose it there, are you able to come today? 
I will make sure I come. That okay. would be 7 p.m. my time. So I will yeah. find a way to come. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's super late. I think someone had a conflict, a work conflict until then. Um, so they wanted to come after work. So we might have to talk about some other options if that's going to be super late for folks. So yeah, we can. Yeah, I mean, I think okay. we do have some before noon central eastern <clears throat> slots <clears throat> open on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday now with the um, uh, com combination of the university and scientific open source groups. So we might be able to like we could possibly, I mean, I don't know, I'm just speaking, I'm talking off to the cuff here, but perhaps the hour after this meeting might be available every other week now. <clears throat> yeah, we'll have to look. We'll, we'll definitely take a look at that. Well, and Matt notes the website meeting isn't happening now as well, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we will definitely take a look. But I will, I will give you first pick because I'm looking to pick one of those slots for the Augur software meeting. So I will give, I'll give you, I will wait for you to pick a slot for project management and then I will pick one. Well, it's okay. Well, we'll we should have something soon because we're going to meet today and we can talk about it today. All right. Um, let me just make a note here. Okay. Um, so the next thing on our list, sorry, was there anything else about project manager? Sorry. No, I, I really like the idea. I, I'll just, it took me a while to, I think, understand what it was, <laughs> if you recall. Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, and we're also, so, oh, go ahead, Matt, sorry. I was just gonna say, I really like the idea, I think because it gives, a, a really great way to recognize people for the support that they can do in the project. Um, so I, I really like it for that. Yeah, that was one thing that we talked about too, was the fact that it does allow us to um, provide a path for leadership and some non-code ways and give people, like you said, just said recognition for work that they're doing and just like make it a little more official for them, you know, and like hopefully we'll have that have their names posted on the if there's a, a repo for instance that is you know they would be listed as the maintainer and as a as a point of contact and leadership for that project so i would so this makes me think so i have a a box of sweatshirts in my office and like how do we how do we get things to people across the globe that isn't just like me shipping it out of my university i think i've tried to ship things across the globe and they don't ever make it i have to mm -hmm. and so like i feel like this as an example this box of sweatshirts would be great to like give out to people who are in these <clears throat> roles um but then i feel like all i can do with them is give them to people who are like here in the u.s or that i see at conferences so it's not i'm not a great distribution system so it just it made me think of that as well i'm not sure how to fix that that's a that's a really good point and i'm wondering if we could do even like a regional like maybe we can talk to ruth um or you know if we have folks that are in other countries um we could um try it yeah um yiga has a dh so one thing i was going to suggest based on my prior life experience shipping things around the world is asking people who live in a locale what the reliable shipper is in that locale. <clears throat> so like Giga suggests DHL. Um, that DHL would typically be you'd probably send a box of 50 sweatshirts to one person, kind of a distribution channel. I don't think they're really geared towards one, one sweatshirt. I was uh, going to say um, <clears throat> maybe they could have them printed locally. Yeah. yeah. Just oh, keep it all there, you know, no shipping in, except for within their country. That's another possibility, yeah. But yeah, or either that or sh bulk shipping to somebody. I mean, I know people yeah. do it. <laughs> so yeah. Somebody's doing it somewhere. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. You can send things globally, I'm pretty sure. But <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's, uh, it's definitely a thing that's been done. 
So it's a solvable problem somehow, but I guess we'll have to think about it a little more. Yeah, maybe I could talk to you and or Ruth about like sending a pretty big box of something. So um, I, I know for Nigeria, bulk shipping to one person would be more feasible, like say to Ruth, um, because she also resides in Lagos and yep. shipping to Lagos, it's kind of easier. And then she can now distribute to other people in the other cities. Okay. So yeah, to Ruth. Okay, I've heard a couple of Ruth. So I'll I'll connect with Ruth. <laughs> Is she on the call today? I don't see her. I don't. Ruth, <laughs> Ruth, you're getting a box of stuff. <laughs> We've just volunteered you for this huge thing. Sorry, lot. Sorry about your luck. I'll connect. <laughs> but thank you everybody for like feedback and comments. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's a great point because we've we've wanted to do that for a while, you know, because it's it's a great way to recognize and just tell people how much they, you know, they we appreciate their contributions and that piece of it is is tough. Yeah, I couldn't even get poker chips through some so yeah, when I was doing the chaos cast. So yeah, but we'll figure it out. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Um, so the next one is I'm going to be out two weeks from today. I'll be at a conference. So if somebody wants to facilitate in my stead, I wanted to give a little time in case somebody new would like to try it. We do have some documentation on how to do it. If somebody new would like to try who's never done it before or somebody old who's done it a lot. I think uh, Peculiar Uma says yes. I don't ah, know if that was a yes yeah. to this or not. Blessing is yes. raising her hand. Okay. Should we have co-facilitators? I think that's cool. Awesome. Thank you both very much. I am coming back from All Things Open on October 18th, but my flight lands at 9 a.m., so I should be okay to be here in time. So I think I'm okay. I don't like it when, you know, conferences are on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, like they should never be on Tuesdays and Wednesdays because those are busy days for me. What the heck? They should check with me. Anyway, um, somebody added this. Do we have metrics that cover conflict resolution and mediation? Great question. I don't think we do. Yeah, I added that. And that is because um, last week, I attended the non-focus um, DICS on conference section, and um, a topic was brought up about conflict in a community and maintainers not knowing how to address it. And so I was curious whether we have a metric that covers that. I know it's supposed to be like in the code of conduct, but I'm not sure we have like a set aside metric that um, actually covers that. I think you're right, Anita. We have the code of conduct enforcement metric. If you, and it's not complete either, Elizabeth. If you go to the spreadsheet, <clears throat> scroll down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's we have it there something I don't know if that is covering kind of what you're thinking about Anita as well or what they talked about well um so I also went ahead to look out for like if there are like examples of that and I saw samples on that good doc project so they have a section that kind of talks about how to address um situations that come up around conflict um, how to approach it and um, the ways that you can tackle it at the end of the day. So I just thought I should drop this here as well. It's a great reference. I'm I'm curious, Anita, what? in the talk that you were in, in the conversation you were in, when they say um, conflict resolution, are they talking about like making technical decisions or are they talking about personal conflict? or what was there anything more specific around that okay so um the conversation went this way 
um, someone said in their community they had um, a conflict that came up amongst um, community, the maintainers of a project and contributors of that project. And so at the end of the day, they were not sure how to approach the issue and um, how to settle the entire dispute. And that is um, why I brought this up. Okay. So it could have probably been either of those things or, or maybe both of those things. Interesting. But also sounds like it, you know, was that a discussion about a conflict that may not be a code of conduct violation, but just a conflict between people? That's a different thing, people? right? Like conflicts between people and code of, con code of conduct, that's different. I, I believe they could be different. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just sorry, I'm standing. Back and you, is this, is this something that you want to start a doc? on and and like put some thoughts down or was this just kind of a question this is i guess i, I guess my uh, question uh, back to you is how, <laughs> how passionate yeah. do you feel about this yeah yeah so um i wanted to confirm if we have something already and if not i think it's worth considering as a metric as well I'm I'm wondering if if this would be a metric that um is different than a code of conduct enforcement metric, or if it would be a metric something like um what was the name like conflict I'm sorry conflict resolution and mediation would be the metric, and then it would be like there are a variety of different ways that this can um, become present within a community. One is around code of conduct violations and enforcement, and others are around conflicts that don't necessarily violate a code of conduct, um, but definitely need to be resolved in, in an effort to move the project forward positively or something like that where this becomes the metric and code of conduct enforcement is a is a part of that. Is there education or a place where people can find or make reference to this? Because if not, the metric, uh, everything that we're doing, I know you said there is the code of conflict, but just some education, a quick, you know, um, thing that, that individuals can click on to kind of learn exactly what is meant here so that if there is a violation, people are not confused by why. Right. Yeah. Just, just to amplify that, I think I think code of conduct violations definitely emerge from conflict where where it goes too far and somebody loses their cool and starts behaving badly. So and I think there's helping people manage conflict, I think, is a way of preventing some code of conflict violations or code of code of conduct violations conflict and conduct are too close to me alliteratively so we're too close to each other rather rita is there anything that gitlab has done in this regard that's not necessarily say code of conduct related that is just more you know conflict related um well so it if we if we're talking in the realm of um conduct, of course, we have things where we try to educate people on behaviors. So we, we specifically have behaviors that are expected um, around diversity, inclusion, and belonging. But I think that they extend beyond that, right? Uh, just there's a human factor of respect that, uh, that is expected. That being said, to your point, Sean, I think that there are times when a person may be offensive or um, even violate 
a code of conduct, but they don't realize that they're doing it. It may be a microaggression. It may be a subtle act of exclusion. It may be a variety of things. Um, and then when brought to their attention, it's like, oh, well, I, you know, I didn't know. Um, so those are some of the things we focus on just because I think um, there are things that happen even in different regions that are considered um, offensive, but may not be in the US or in the US, we may consider it offensive, vice versa. So I think mm -hmm. that's why I asked about education because I think that there, you have to be, somebody said regionally, you have to be sensitive to the fact that there are things that happen in the US that we may not consider offensive that might be extremely offensive in EMEA or APAC or Latin, one of our, our LATAM countries. So that's why I was asking about education. And to that point, I think in our code of conduct um, metric, we do point people, if I'm not mistaken, we do point people to some references. Let me just make sure. I can't see because this thing's in the way. There we go. I don't, All right, Elizabeth, I, I got to say, I've just looked up Koja. I looked oh up the Koja. Gosh. Where is it? Code of conduct. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> but I, I saw, while you're doing that, I saw the first screen that popped up when you created a new window, and I'm like, what is Ecosia? And it's the search engine that plants trees. It is the search engine that plants trees. Here it is. Is this code of conduct at event? Yeah. So I think we have under... We have some references, Sharita, but we probably could have more. So if there are specific ones that you would recommend, we can for sure add it. Let's see what this one is for the project. Yeah, we just look at uh, how well the code of conduct is written here. That's our, and then our other hmm, interesting so should do things but i don't know that i'm seeing like an a lot of them are just pdfs <laughs> and i sometimes hate just saying, here's a seven page PDF, <laughs> you're good to go. You know, that doesn't seem like education that you talk about Sharia too much. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a document. We could, we, I, I think what I'd love to add to some of the stuff we have is just, we could put definitions of microaggressions, of subtle acts of exclusion, et cetera. But I'd love to see how that could translate within this community. Right, because I think ours are not focused on the developer community, which I think um, I shouldn't say aren't, but I think that there's some specificity we need to do that would translate better in this community. So if we have examples, we can put definitions and then just add some examples. So Sharita, in your opinion, would would you? roll in conflict resolution into a code of conduct um, enforcement or training around code of conduct enforcement? Um, I think I think conflict resolution, um, it, to, to Sean's point, is a little bit different, right? Code right. of conduct is, is the foundation on which a company builds, right? Uh, th these are the expectations of what happened for you as a team member or an employee. Conflict resolution, <laughs> the ones that I've mediated, um, tend to be more at the executive level and, and uh, they happen across the board. I shouldn't say that, but they happen across the board. So I, I think it's a little bit of, we need to separate the two um, and make sure that people are clear on what the differences are. And we could help with that. I'd be glad to be glad to help with that. But I think they're different. Yeah, I think they're different too. I, I... And I mean, I, I do think conflict resolution is important, even though it's it may not be clearly directly in the scope of something that that relates to code of conduct, 
I do think it is, like I said earlier, I think it is a not managing conflict well leads to all kinds of bad outcomes, whether they're code of conduct violations or not. Like it's usually never good for a project if somebody doesn't manage a conflict well. And there could be maybe also a, a quick education on how allies show up in these spaces, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like that's the other thing that that really gives power because there may be someone that doesn't feel empowered to say something if they see something right. or know what to do. And so how do we equip allies to be able to speak up on behalf of others? Um, I love this conversation and I'm sad that it's the end of our meeting time. Um, <laughs> what would, I tell you what, if somebody has feels passionate about this, and I think we've decided that this maybe should be an extra, a different metric than the code of Con conflict enforcement or just the code of conduct. So, um, um, if so Anita, I don't want to put it on you, but if somebody does want to um, start a metric, uh, we can point you to the te template. We'll just do it in Slack. <clears throat> How's that? Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah. Awesome. Um I'd, um, I'd like to give that a shot. I don't think I have um, worked on a metric before, but I'll be asking a lot of questions on how to do that. <laughs> Anita, I can help you too. Awesome, great. Yep. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you everybody. What a good meeting. Oh, it was a great conversation today. So thank you for showing up and um, yeah, we'll see you here same time next week. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. Yeah, bye, everyone. Bye.